Hello and welcome! Today we're gonna learn how to achieve an pure TCP reversal and handshake handling for Python coding. When I refer to pure TCP, I mean that we're gonna construct a full TCP header with its values. Additional, we're gonna construct its uh, TCP checksum value as we learned at the previous videos through the binary um, algorithm. Additional, we're gonna construct the IP header values and its IP checksum. Later, we're gonna uh, handle through the, the reversal, we, we will create the uh, handshake ending and we will continue to, to handle uh, the sequence number and the act number as we will finish the uh, first uh, establishment of the connection of the three-way handshake. So, when we refer to a virtual, we know that the client should start with the connection, right? This is the main goal. The, the more, the, the, this, is the, this is the basic meaning of the reversal, right? So, let's begin. At the left side, we have the client. At the right side, we have the server. So, we know that the client should start with the connection, but before we're gonna pass uh, info or data, a TCP connection, we need to make it oriented and we need to start with the free handshake mode. So let's begin. The first thing that the client should do is to send a SYN request with its code 02. The client will create a random number and send it to the server with the seek number. And he will have ACK number which is zero. Meanwhile, because he didn't get any sequence number from the server. Next, if the server wish to accept this connection, and if I can say he is listening, and I will explain later how we can uh, virtualize this listening without the uh, listen and the accept command, and that's how we're gonna understand what is uh, the real meaning of listening the connection okay and to accept it so the server if he will uh, wish to get at uh, this port uh, the connection he will send a scene act um, response with its code it will be 12. At the SYNAC packet, it will send a sequence number as well and ACK number as well. The sequence number will be a random number that it will give to the client and the ACK number will be the same sequence number we got from the client, okay? Plus one. Why plus one? Because we wish to forward to continue with this connection. I will explain later when we will, after we will uh, finish the freeway handshake the establishment of the connection how we're going to continue with the act number and the sequence number and what uh, how and why we should add uh, different numbers from one the digit one as we can see at the establishment of the TCP connection each packet we send we need to get act acknowledged right so the server sent act and additional is sent a scene to the client so the client should respond with the ACK so as we can see the third packet which is ACK it can it will be with the code 10 and the client will send a circus number which is the ACK number that the server wish wish to get to which is will be a triple one and two as we can see over here and then it will send its ACK number, its request to, to, to accept at the next packet, the server will send the ACK number with uh, 4 times 2 plus 1. So, at our code, okay, after this process will be finished, the client will send a word pass in order that the server will identify its by its WordPress and by its, uh, of course, the, the IP address and the port number it wish to connect to. 
after we will get this uh, verification the server should start with the beginning to send a command prompt command to the client in order to get the output of its uh, command prompt in other words we will begin the session with the uh, reversal okay we're going to send some commands the client should process it uh, through the uh, sub process of uh, python and then send us the output of the data and the error of the data of the output and then we will combine those if this those packets will be uh, bigger than uh, uh, the maximum uh, mtu we going to send it each packet we're going to divide it to uh, 1000 bytes and send them together and then the server will combine those packets and print it to its uh, terminal it's not difficult but we should understand some of the issues we will need to uh, handle and um, consider them so after the client uh, passed the verification uh, process with the server the server will send right will send with push arc okay with push arc um, uh, command uh, its um, its packet okay so the server took the ACK number the client at the last time sent to us what you wish to get right so it will be triple two and three and then we will send an ACK number plus one okay we had the last time we got the triple one and two and now we wish to get our triple one and two plus one in order to continue the connection meanwhile then the client can respond in two different ways it can respond with arc and then push and then we will arc it or it can send a push arc which says it will acknowledge the last packet we sent to him with the push arc and additional it will push data and then we will need to hack it okay so we send command to the client right we have at the first time data at the tcp uh, uh, header right now let's say is that we write the command help okay which is uh, in bytes it will be four bytes okay each uh, character at the data section will be one byte uh, length so we know that the client right um, uh, we know that the client um, again should uh, get the number uh, triple two and three okay this is its last ACK number we wish to get and we will send our uh, ACK number we wish to get right it will be a uh, triple one and three so the client will get this data right so what you gonna do is different what we know right until uh, until this stage he will send a sequence number okay which is a uh, uh, which is the same uh, ACK number the, the server I wish to get but the client ACK number will be the sequence number the server sent to us plus the data link okay we got from the client so we got the help command it will be four bytes we should take the ACK, uh, the ACK number and plus it to the number of bytes we got from our server which will be 4 bytes and then the server will do the same he will um, he will respond with the uh, new sequence number which will be 
triple two and it will not be four it will be uh, it will be eight so let's sorry for that uh, it will be eight okay just a moment it will be triple two and eight okay because this is the arc number the client should uh, get and at the data section the client sent to us at the push arc he sent to us the command output we sent the help command right the, its output so its output will be very big like, let's say uh, it will be uh, something like uh, 5000 bytes okay so what you will need to do okay you will need to add the data link to its last uh, arc number it got from the client which is the sequence number so in our case we cannot accept uh, packets above uh, 1460 bytes right so what we should do is to split those packets if if they are big then 1460 bytes uh, to split them to another uh, smaller uh, packet in order that we will get correctly the data without any problem we are doing it because we are handling the uh, TCP uh, the TCP uh, ACK and sequence number all the all all, uh, all the session itself so we should be be careful and to know uh, exactly what we do so um let's um explain it again in order that we'll uh, understand it correctly okay so we know it's a reversal right the client should start with the connection he will send again a scene request which, which will be zero two okay with a random sequence number and arc number then the client the server sorry should respond with arc right but if he will wish to process with the client he will should he should do additional to the act to send a scene okay so it's called a scene arc which is called it's 12 so the server will take the sequence number he got from the client and will add one value to this number and put it it's on its own arc number and he will define a new random uh, number at the sequence number that it will send to the client okay after that each packet we say that we uh, send no matter the size the server the client we need to hack it okay so the client will need to hack the scene of the server it will the hack uh, code is 10 it will send hack with the uh, sequence number one triple one and two which is the last arc number that the server should get right and then he will say will tell to the server i wish to get the new arc number which will be uh, four times two plus one okay then the next step after we establish the connection of the tcp right all of this is the establishment we should proceed with the data uh, transferring so the server send a command prompt command in order to get its output right the reversal so we should use the code 18 which is a push arc because we are pushing data okay with the sequence number which is the same arc number the client should get right the last arc number that the client said to us hey i wish to get this arc number which will be at your case at the server side the sequence number then the server will says okay i wish to continue with the session okay 
and I wish to get a response to the packet that I say that I sent and I will take my last ACK number right which is the sequence number the client sent to us right at the last time and I will uh, plus it with one digit at this packet don't forget we sent data which is the command prompt command we send if it's help if it's dear if it's delete if it's all the commands we wish to send then the client can do two things to accept this packet or to send a push hack which says I'm acknowledge your packet and I'm additional push a data or to do more a uh, long way different way to first to act this packet and then to send a push hack so the client send a push hack okay so he says that I'm acknowledge your packet and I'm sending your uh, your output uh, according to your command you send so we know the server should accept this arc number which will be the sequence number at the client side right so it will be double one uh, sorry triple one and three so here we go the client did it next the arc number of uh, the client side will be differently why differently as you remember at the last time we got data from the server if it's the help command that says so the help is combined from four words sorry uh, characters it will be four bytes so the arc number of the client it says to the server okay my arc number will be a triple two three plus four not plus one if we will just plus one we say to the server um, please push again the data you sent to me at the last time which is the command help and now I will accept and I accept at the previous packet just the first word the H and now if I plus it with one, okay, and send it to the server, it will send additional three times of the same command help, and each time we're gonna accept the uh, next uh, character of the world. So in order not to make this situation, which will be uh, much long and not efficient, you will need to add the length of the data you got at the last time because you say to the server hey I'm acknowledge it and this is the new number of the acknowledged number I wish to get but you should know that I will accept all of the data in one packet that you sent to me okay I, I there is no need that you will send another packet at the same data with the same data I I did uh, at my reversal some example that I will show you it's, it's live you you will understand it we will uh, uh, we will uh, see it through example and through Wireshark uh, analysis next the server right got got this packet right when it got this packet you should acknowledge it right because it got the output so this output will be let's say at the client side you send 5000 bytes so the server says hey my acknowledge number is the last sequence number I got from you plus the 5000 bytes I got from you because I'm acknowledge that I I'm I wish to get all of that data at once I don't want I don't wish to get another packet with the same data again okay and the sequence number will be the last arc number the client should uh, accept in our case we cannot send 5000 at once because again the limit it will be 1460 uh, bytes 
So we, so we should consider to uh, split the output and send it, send it in 1000 bytes of data, each packet. So let's do uh, some examples to show you the freeway handshake and then the uh, explanation how to handle correctly after the freeway handshake the uh, the session between the client and the server in order that our connection will be uh, efficient work quick without any issues or uh, duplicate or retransmission to avoid retransmission uh, packets so let's begin let's see live example of our code we will start with the establishment of the connection the scene scene ac and ac and then we will going through the uh, data we transfer and ana analyze it with wireshark and then we are going to dig inside the code so let's begin let's start the server side which is going to uh, listen without the command listening right i will explain it how we can visualize uh, listening to port okay through uh, uh, the pure tcp code we are write for python okay so right now the server is uh, waiting for a scene request right so let's go to the client and start its code okay so as we can see we there was some actions over here all right okay let's do it again sorry for that let's do it again <clears throat> okay let's begin so as we sent as we start the program at our client something happened okay let's see what happened so the client as we say is 1.17 and the server is 1.88 okay the client start with the scene why right then the server if you wish to listen to this port okay to accept this connection uh, it will accept it with another scene it will send but it will acknowledge the scene that he got and then the client will hack it the scene the server sent so let's begin with the sequence number and the hack number so at the first place we can see that the client uh, defined a new random uh, number sequence number which will be this number then it will not have acknowledged number yet because it didn't get any sequence from the server right you can see it over here it's zero so then the server if you wish to proceed with this uh, scene request it will send a scene up which is code 12 right with a new sequence number it will define a random and with act number okay which is the same sequence number it got from the client but it will plus the one digit to this act number okay in order to continue this connection uh, this stage we can see that both of the the client and the server additional to the tcp uh, packet and the ip packet addition to the ip packet at the tcp packet we can see that both of them sent an options okay which says uh, the matter of this uh, how the connection will be we can see it over here we can see that the maximum segment size will be 1460 also the client will define it you can see so right now the client should accept it right to acknowledge the scene that the server sent to so he will take the arc number the last arc number the server sent and put it on its sequence number right let's see it this is the arc number the server sent right what he wished to get and the client do it he put this number over here then the client for the first time 
will say to the server, hey, I wish to get the same sequence number you sent to me at the last time, the random number, but plus one, in order to continue with the connection. Then we can see something strange over here and I will explain why I mean at the previous video when I say if you will handle the sequence and the ACK number we should not be mistake and we should do it efficient so this example is not efficient in order to show you how to handle it correctly when we will proceed with the connection you will see what I mean so let's see an example why why, why, what I did wrong and why it's not efficient. So the client send push ACK, okay? With the same sequence and ACK number he sent from the last time because he didn't get any uh, new response from the server, okay? So he sent the command, okay? Which is the high, okay? It's not a command prompt or something like that or output. It's just a word pass word for to identify uh, through the server so we have a uh, push arc right packet with two bytes data with which is the high uh, characters okay we can see the, the len is two okay the server will need to hack it okay to acknowledge it so it will send the acknowledge number the client send right which is over here but its arc number should be the last um, the last arc, the last sequence number he got from the client which is this number plus the amount of bytes he should accept so there there is over here two bytes right so so we should accept two bytes but if we will tell to the user that our arc number is six at the end and we just pass one and not two and it will not be seven the client again will send the this packet but with its uh, with its last uh, bytes which is the i okay we have h and i so the service says to him in other words i took from your packet just the h character now please send to me the i character the next so in order to avoid it so just imagine if you have the help command or the dear command you will have a lot of packets and it's not efficient so what we're gonna do is to take the last sequence number we got from the client and to plus it the number of bytes we uh, should accept the number of bytes that the client sent to us you need to be careful here because let's say the help command in uh, in our case will be 5000 bytes so you cannot accept all of the amount in one time in one packet you will need to divide it so you will need to be uh, very uh, you will need to be um, you need to be careful with it okay so let's proceed with the connection okay let's send the deal command as we can see we got the output and let's see right now the sequence and the arc number how uh, how we handle it and how it's work efficient so at the last time we sent arc and that's it right from the server to the client right so where is the last arc? Here we go. This is the last arc, which says, I accept your last I character, right? right? So, after we have the arc we sent, we need to send a push arc because we are sending a command, something from our side to the client, right? We're gonna use the same sequence number we used at the last our arc and the same arc number, right? Why, why is that? It's because we didn't get any new response or new uh, request from the client so we're gonna send it and we can see that the dear command is just uh, three characters it need to be three bytes but each 
time I'm sending something in my uh, program, I'm sending 12 bytes, okay? So, what the client should do right now? At the first place, when he accept it, before he will send to us and acknowledge it, right? He should process it at the sub process in Python, at the shell, and he will need to respond to us with this output, right? With this output. So, the client at the section of the seek and the ACK number will do as follow. He will give to the server the last ACK he wish to get, right? This is the number. And the ACK number of the client will be changed to the following. He will take the last sequence number the server sent to him and plus the 12 bytes he got from the client and uh, from the server, right? The 12 bytes of command we sent over here. Because he says to him, I accept it, it wants, it's okay, I will not need to, I will not need that you will send another packets to send the another bytes, right? In order to make it efficient. And right now we can see that the client send push and ack, which means that he acknowledge the command port command request from the server and he push the output of this of the command prompt command uh, request data okay this is the output of the dir command so he says to the server hey this is the sequence the new sequence the new arc number and the length of it it's 1065 bytes okay don't forget it so what the server should do the server should do he should take the arc number from the client and put it at its sequence uh, number and then in the at the arc number of the server it should take the last sequence number from the client and plus the 1065 uh, 65 bytes as you can see over here why to do so again if you will not do so will have the same problem we had with the i com with the i uh, command the i characters we got from the client over here at the uh, at the act section the server says to him hey i will not accept all of the high of the high characters not both of them i, I will just accept one of the characters by the way i'm telling you i'm i'm uh, send you the acknowledge uh, the acknowledge number just with plus one value not plus two two characters okay if we're going to do plus one we're going to say to him hey send the next uh, one bikes character so we will have another push arc and arc so it's not efficient here we can see that as we got uh, this output of the dir command we say to him we acknowledge it with plus the data uh, the number the, the the length of the data you sent to me the output okay so we took the sequence number from the client and plus all of the data we should accept at once so that's you're going to do your tcp connection efficient okay so let's see it over here we can see the same uh, process as we saw at the example the server will send a command right and the client will take the sequence number from the client from the server sorry and plus the data link okay he got from the server so it will be 12 bytes or 4 bytes if they in our example okay it's not matter it's matter the amount of bytes the server sent Okay, so after he do he did it right, he will send it to the server. And additional, he will send the command prompt output. In our case, it's the dir command. So the dir command have more than one thousand bytes, right? So the server, in order to accept all of it in one packet, he will take the acknowledge number. He should pass to the client and he put it 
and it, it will put it in its sequence number and then in the act section it will say to the client hey I will I will take your sequence number you sent to me at the last time and plus the data len the the command prompt output length you sent to me and then I will send it to you and that's the way I will tell the, the server I will tell the client I got all of your data in one packet it's okay let's continue let me explain the help command and, it, and its sequence and act number as you remember the last time we uh, we push command from the server side we push the help command before it was the dev command okay now let's analyze it through the Wireshark and understand its uh, uh, sequence and act number. So let's search the dear command first. Okay, as we can see over here, we, the server, sent to the client a push act with the uh, dear command. As you know, each command we will send from our server side, not matter its size, the data will be maximum on 12 bytes. Okay, then the uh, client will get this uh, packet right it will take the act number from the server and put it in its sequence number and then it will take the sequence number from the client and add to it the 12 bytes we got from the client from the server so here you go and we'll, when we will put it the client will put it in its, in its own act number okay we add the client act number in 12 bytes then the server will take this act number right from the client and put it in its own sequence number and then it will take the sequence number from the client and it will add 1065 bytes and put it on its own act number why because we got data okay we explain to the client i will accept all of data all of that data in this packet at once okay there is no need that you will send it again and again and again and again okay that's why we add all of the 1065 as the client did also he add 12 bytes as once so the next command is more complicated because and the help command, the output of the help command, as you can see, is 5,086 bytes. As we know, we cannot send uh, above 1,460 bytes each packet, so we will need to split it. So, uh, at my program and the client side, I uh, ask from the client to split uh, the data if it's uh, big than uh, 1000 uh, bytes so the client again the server sent this specific sequence and act number right then the client will take the act number of the server and put it in its own sequence number and then it will take the sequence number of the server and add the 12 bytes the server sent to us right as you can see over here 81 become 93 why to do so again to tell the server hey i got all of your data in this packet it's okay let's continue so after that the client will take the same sequence number and the same act number why it's because there is no any response or any new request from the server and send its output to the server when it's divided as you can see uh, numbers that smaller than 1,460 uh, bytes. So let's start with this packet, okay? And um, as we can see over here, that um, okay, we can see that the first packet, the sequence number of the first packet, it's one five triple four nine zero two double three, right? And then the same, uh, not the same, the a different packet with the same number but uh, with 1000 big than that number. But how he got to this number 
before you get any response from the client, right? Because we can see that the serve the client the sorry the client sent twice a push hack, but it's because the difference on time that our server is not very uh, is respond uh, normally not very not very high in speed uh, matter. So this is the first packet we see on the time right difference from our client. So the server will take this packet over here as you can see. It will take the sequence number right and it will add to it 1000 bytes as you can see over here 0 2 double 3 become 1 2 double 3 and then it will say to the client hey i got your 1000 bytes in one packet please proceed please continue then the client will take the new arc number put it in its own sequence number and the arc number of the server will stay the same it will send the server another uh, the second packet of the output right and then we can see the arc and its change of the arc of the server side right according to the length of the data so let's take another example if this is the second packet so it will need to be with three five four four nine one double three plus the data right one plus the data so this is the new arc number of the server side. We can see it over here. We acknowledge it over here. And then we'll continue to search the sequence number with the client with this sequence number, right? So we can see it over here. And then we will need to add to this sequence number the number, the length of the data, which is 606 bytes. So 606 bytes. We need to search 759 in the end. Here we can see that acknowledge this packet. And the last packet is over here. The client sent this sequence number that we will need to add the length okay and this is the new arc number of the server we can see it over here that he said finally to the client hey i want also this packet at once here we go and continue if you wish to so um let's um Let's open again the, the live uh, example and see if our reverse shell for our uh, full handling is reliable, is okay, and we don't have any problem or issue. As you can see, I have a timer over here because um, I wish to know at the time I I count down or count up if I will need to act some packet that I don't see before I ask from the user to put its raw uh, input. So as you can see. I will check some also in each and each uh, packet we sent from the server side need to be correct okay if it will not be correct the result so the client will not accept this packet and <clears throat> in wireshark usually you will not see it i recommend you to open tcp dump and check your uh, 
check some uh, values at your TCP and IP, of course. So, at the next step, we'll investigate our code, how we achieved uh, full TCP and how we will handle uh, the establishment of the connection and the and the, uh, um, and the continuous of the session when we talk between the client and the server, how to manage correctly the uh, the sequence and the ACK numbers each and each uh, time we send in and receiving packets from the client and the server. So that's all for now. Thank you. I wanted to show you again the reversal in action because uh, at the last video we uh, saw just uh, part of uh, the output. Okay. So let's start with the drill command, right? You can see that we got the full output without corruption and when we check the reliability of the of the um, reversal we see that it's working fine as well the result of the wireshark we don't have any warning or issue when we start the connection okay And that's it. In the next video, we're going to investigate the code. So, thank you for watching. I wanted to show you again the reversal in action because uh, at the last video we uh, saw just uh, part of uh, the output. 
Okay. So let's start with the drill command, right? You can see that we got the full output without corruption. And when we check the reliability of the of the um, reversal, we see that it's working fine. As well, the result of the Wireshark, we don't have any warning or issue when we start the connection. Okay. And that's it. In the next video, we're going to investigate the code. So, thank you for watching.